G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, even though Bitcoin isn't doing, you know, anything too crazy at the moment, it's still at least a good couple of thousand dollars, you know, nearly four thousand dollars thereabout under its all time high. Hello, good looking. <laughs> <laughs> See, have a look what's happened over here. 1.9 trillion. Oh, so close to that $2 trillion mark. This is great news. I mean, let's go and have a look. Let's just see. Let's have a look. And let's bring this all the way in to down to around about here. And there we go. What's it doing? Stop that. Right, so we can see we got up to what was this 1.879 that was the cap and now we have broken over it so 1.9 trillion dollars getting oh so close to that two trillion dollar cap so you know the the altcoins are obviously sort of pumping right now because bitcoin's still sort of just ranging but what i would say is that the altcoins outside of the top 100 are probably been doing quite well don't get me wrong we can see right here that the the top 100 are still doing all right but you know there doesn't look to be anything too crazy here at the moment well actually tron have a look at that that's gone almost vertical right there now i am somewhat concerned about you know this kind of gain that we've had not that i think it's all going to go away or anything like that but we'll get to the charts very shortly and i'll show you what i mean all right let's have a look 1.915 trillion dollars so nice btc dominance though and this supports that it's actually dropping are we going to go into that kind of crazy altcoin season that we saw in 2017 because 2017 played out very similar to how this is playing out right now it was around about kind of quarter one where things slowly started to pick up don't get me wrong they picked up before but then that kind of last part, you know, the last three quarters of the year in 2017 and even into the first part of 2018 is where things really started to get exponential. So is that what we're seeing right now? I mean, have a look, Ethereum, it's almost getting back up to its old all-time high, 2000, I think sort of 100, 2000, something like that. It was around about there, depending on which chart you are looking at. Again, yeah, very, very close. But again, just wait till we get to the chart and we'll have a look at something. I, you know, sort of mid-term, I am absolutely bullish on this, but the short term, as in the next few days, i.e. the weekend, we could see a bit of a retracement. We'll have to wait and see. All right, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Because we can see a lot of green there. Things are looking pretty good. All right, try and as we said, I mean, that just went near vertical. So 39% Filecoin continues to do extremely well. I'm so glad that I held on to that. Uh, but I did sell 10% uh, of all my Filecoins. And it's up, I think, 100 200% since then. But look, I sold it for a profit. Got back some of the money I put in. So, you know, I'm not exactly devastated. But yeah, unrealized gains. What can you do? And look at these gains as well. 39%, 31%, 26%, 20%. 19% and then we start to get down to the just kind of they're a little bit below again what I call okay which is that 15% but some great kind of moves here like you know sort of overall nothing kind of too crazy except for you know the top four they've done extreme well top five they've had some really good gains and this is crazy gains all right well not crazy we've seen crazier but pretty crazy anyway all right what about not done so well though has anything in the top 100 you know kind of got really hammered no, nothing has. There we go. The worst loss is 18% for Kasama, and it's still up 17%. So really kind of, you know, single-digit losses. And again, you know, really under 5% is pretty much nothing. Uh, again, unless it's just been going down for some time. But yeah, Chili's, again, you know, having its kind of retracement, it did so well. But I, I think Chili's will come back now. Let's move on. This is what I'm worried about in the charts. We've got heaps of stories to get through. There's some really great news there. All right. Here is this candle that I spoke about. Now, look at this. 23.49. So it's nearly midnight. This candle is almost done. And have a look at it. It's an indecision candle. Indecision candles 
that's exactly what it is. You know, the, the name says it all. The market is undecided on what it wants to do. So we could get to here, and obviously it's Thursday here in Australia. So Friday comes tomorrow and then the weekend. I mean, you know, I don't need to tell you that. I think we could possibly have a weekend sell-off and it could be quite steep. So again, that's why I think we go here. We're going to come down to here. We possibly get another fake out so we get a little bit higher and we think we're going to go over before we have one more kind of big sort of low. And again, it breaks down to below what we've been to before, but kind of roughly, you know, touches some old support and resistance. Now again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It's just something that we need to keep in mind. Uh, a consideration, if plan A fails, so plan A is we just keep kind of going up. So up and up and up and up. If plan A doesn't happen, what do I think might happen? I think something like this might happen. Now again, this isn't gonna be exact. It may not play out exactly like this, but it just may play out something like this before we do finally make that move. And I think maybe, you know, again, because the weekend's coming, possibly if we are going to make a big move, it comes next week. But look, again, I've been wrong before and I could be wrong. I, not could be, I will be wrong again. No one knows at all. This is just what I'm looking out for. But again, in sort of the, the midterm, over the next few months at least, I do think we're going higher. I do think we get up to that kind of $100,000 mark. And then I think we have a brutal rejection somewhere around the 100,000, whether it's before in the 90s, and we call it the nervous 90s for Australians uh, or anyone who's into cricket, the nervous 90s, that's where batsmen are. They get into the 90s and quite often get bowled out. Can't make that 100 because that's what's on their mind. Uh, or we could just re pip over 100, like maybe go 101, 102, 104. And then we have, again, a brutal correction. That is what I suspect will happen. But again, it's never financial advice and there's no guarantees in life. I could be completely wrong. All right, so let's see if this plays out something like this. It won't be exactly like this. There we can go. It's turned red already right before we get to the end of the day. But again, still got a little bit left. All right, look at these stories. I mean, these are all really interesting stories in my opinion. Goldman Sachs says it is about to launch its Bitcoin offering for wealth managers in quarter two. That's now April 1st. So giant American investment bank Goldman Sachs plans to offer cryptocurrency investment infrastructure to its wealth management clients in the second quarter of 2021. So it sounds like, again, things are just starting to, you know, they're simmering at the moment. You know, all the big industries and all the big players outside of, you know, the real early adopters, uh, they they've been you know building building getting things ready and now it's ready to go and again that's kind of what happened in 2017 except for it wasn't big institutions but it gets to a point where it just kind of bubbles away and I do think of it like boiling water it's just bubbling 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 and then all of a sudden the kettle just starts to whistle and it, and it doesn't like just whistle really hard at first, it kind of whistles a little bit and it gets a little bit louder, a little bit louder before it's just really peaking. And I think that real peak will come uh, again, you know, somewhere from sort of August, maybe through to March next year. And look, again, it could be that super cycle. Who knows? And I've spoke about that before. Grayscale. So again, they were selling their stuff at a discount before. It was undervalued. But now in just four days, Grayscale increased its... Uh, total uh, assets under management, that's what AUM is, by over $3 billion, $3 billion in four days following the addition of five new trust tokens, which are Chainlink uh, and Basic Attention Token. Uh, we got Mana there, Filecoin, that's why Filecoin's been doing so well. So Grayscale now holds $4.4 billion under asset management, which represents an increase of over $3 billion in just four days. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. All right, and again, more bullish news. Blockchain, uh, sorry, blockchain, Black, BlackRock, <laughs> struggling with my English again, has begun trading Bitcoin futures. So they held 6.5 million in Bitcoin futures earlier this year, and it had appreciated $360,000. Look, that's only... You know, a couple of months they made $360,000, you know, a little bit over a quarter of a million dollars. Well, more than a little bit, but, you know, in a couple of months and in a market that is, you know, still shaken up by, you know, all the things that are going on globally with the vaccine rollout and all that kind of stuff, they're still making that kind of money. And from, it's $6.5 million. 
It's not like they put in tens of millions or, you know, hundreds of millions to make 360,000. They put in 6.5 million. That is an amazing return. All right, so crypto lending forms, and I think this is going to change very, very quickly. So why Genesis, BlockFi, Lend are cutting interest rates on large-scale Bitcoin deposits. So crypto lending firms, including Genesis and BlockFi, are cutting the interest rates uh, they pay on large-scale Bitcoin deposits, potentially signaling the end of the glorified 4 to 6% levels that have served as a staple to the lucrative market. All right. Behind the cuts in the crypto interest rates, according to industry executives, is shrinking demand from big traders to borrow Bitcoin for easy profit opportunities. There is simply too much Bitcoin supply in search of yield relative to institutional demand. I think this is going to change as soon as Bitcoin makes this next leg up, and it will. Once it gets past this $60,000 mark, and particularly if it gets to 70, 80, 90,000, watch this change again. So basically, the Bitcoin lenders are protecting their margins by cutting deposit rates. And again, that's because it's just been ranging. It hasn't really been moving. It's just, yeah, kind of going sideways. Once it starts to go up again, I reckon once Bitcoin breaks 65, 70,000, it'll change again. All of a sudden, the big players are going to want to get in and borrow more Bitcoin because now they're going to believe, all right, it wasn't the end. We're probably going to $100,000 and it'll just chop and change. It'll be all over the place. And again, once we hit that $100,000 mark, thereabouts, I think there's the brutal retraction. Uh, then this will go way down. And then when we get back over $100,000 again, it'll ramp back up again. All right, Hollywood getting into NFTs. So leg leg legendaries, Big theatrical and streaming film uh, arrives alongside three different NFT collectibles. This is for King Kong vs. Godzilla, so you can buy NFTs for that now. This is where it starts. It's just going to continue to grow. Massive space NFTs. Again, I'm not buying any NFTs particularly. I just don't know enough. Uh, I'm investing in the platforms that NFTs will be held on. So Engine uh, for one, and I'll likely get into Chili's and maybe get back into Mana. All right. The weekend, getting into NFTs. So he's cleared his schedule to do some uh, NFTs. Again, more NFT news. They just continue to grow. Digital Euro. The president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, says that the release of a digital euro will take at least another four years. I don't think it will. I think something will happen sooner rather than later. And again, I think once the digital uh, dollars come out, you know, pounds, euros, whatever it may be, I think there's going to be uh, a big retracement from the crypto markets at that time because people will think, you know, the, the, un the uneducated who aren't into crypto and don't understand it will think that digital dollars will basically be the next, uh, you know, Bitcoin and it'll be able to make them lots of money until they work out that that's not how it works. And then all of a sudden people get into, yeah, Bitcoin all over again engine all right massive news they are now cross-chain so engine secures 18.9 million funding dollars for polka dot based uh nft blockchain so they are an ethereum base now they're moving to polka dot so amid the expanding non-fungible token metaverse and we've already talked about that engine is set to debut the first ever nft blockchain built on polka dot and this is concerning for the ethereum market as well because now a lot of chains are starting to move from ethereum scaling just isn't happening fast enough and they need you know the optimistic roll-ups and eth 2.0 uh, and side chains and all the rest of it but we got some side chain news Crypto exchange platform Crypto.com has reportedly led the $18.9 million private funding round for Engine's new NFT blockchain platform. So again, I'm super bullish on Engine. I think it really uh, is going to do extremely well in the whole NFT market and in this run and in future runs to come. But look, there's going to be other players that will come in, but Engine's leading the way. Uh, I think Mana Decentraland will do well as well. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Ren still continuing to grow. I'm so glad I held and continued to invest. You know, 40% rally after adding Luna uh, and Sol uh, and FTM to its ecosystem. So Ren, uh, all about sort of cross-chain. Uh, yeah, love the project. Uh, it was invented uh, by some Australian guys, or at least there were some Australian guys part of it. So yeah, love Ren. Got myself a really good position in Ren. It hasn't performed as well as I'd hoped. But it is, you know, I don't mind it being a slow boil. I really like what they're all about, uh, you know, taking uh, 
taking coins from one chain and being able to put it onto the other, particularly uh, Bitcoin going to Ethereum, Bitcoin going to Polkadot and things like that. But again, they're expanding, so nicely done. Right, DeFi platforms Zappa and Aave announced Polygon sidechain. So, as crippling high gas fees put scalability in the spotlight and multiple platforms rush to become the preferred home of Ethereum's decentralized finance or DeFi ecosystem, Layer 2 sidechain Polygon may be emerging as a front runner after scoring two big wins today. This has kind of been spoke about for a while though, at least on the uh, Aave side. So both lending uh, plat protocol, Aave, and portfolio management and uh, batch transaction platform Zappa have announced they will be offering implementations on Polygon. Aave will be launching a trimmed down fork of its money market with seven assets available for borrowing and lending at launch and Zappa will enable Ethereum to Polygon transfers in the first step towards enabling cross-chain Zaps for it, uh, its sorry, cross-chain zaps. It's termed for multi-transaction side uh, single-click deposits and withdrawals. So again, massive for Aave, massive for Zappa, and massive for Polygon. I really am glad that I, again, stuck with them as well. They underperformed, not underperformed, price-wise at least anyway, for quite some time, and I just held, and I didn't sell, and now, yeah, really glad. All right, more NFT, well, yeah, not NFT news, actually, Twitter news. Uh, and Teletubbies, are they getting bullish on Bitcoin? So <laughs> a tweet with a Bitcoin hashtag from the British television series has piqued the interest of many in the crypto space. And here we go. It's the Teletubbies with the laser eyes. Are they now Bitcoin heavy? <laughs> and look, I didn't know Teletubbies has been going for 19 years. I thought it stopped ages ago. Obviously, <laughs> you know, Teletubbies came a little bit after my time. 19 years ago, I wasn't into children's uh, programs, but uh, they're still going and maybe now they are Bitcoin bulls. All right, for my Australian viewers out there, how Australian is this? All right, Australians can now exchange solar energy credits for beer with blockchain. So Victoria Bitter has partnered with blockchain energy trading platform Powerledger to allow customers to earn beer with, sol with surplus solar energy. <laughs> I think there will be a number of people that will be lining up to do this. VB is quite popular in Australia. It's, it's, a, a, a not, it's not a low-end brand, depending on who you talk to, but it's not a premium beer, but a, a lot of people sort of drink it, or at least when I was growing up, a lot of people did. I think there will be a number of people who are into drinking VB and into blockchain that will probably be uh, getting on board. Uh, and look, Power Ledger. haven't heard too much about them really in the crypto space of, of late, but they are doing lots of things uh, definitely in the whole you know, renewable energy space. So if you like beer, particularly VB and Power Ledger, get on board. Right, U.S. Treasury uh, crypto uh, proposed crypto wallet rules uh, is unconstitutional, warns civil rights groups. So the U.S. Treasury was trying to really crack down on uh, unhosted sort of wallets. Uh, so here, we'll read this, this makes more sense. The U.S. De Treasury Department's planned crackdown on cryptocurrency holders' private wallets, sorry, is an unconstitutional power grab. The proposed rule represents a radical and unlawful extension of FinCEN's financial surveillance. So again, they wanted basically everyone to have their wallets, you know, kyc basically, and part of banks and part of... Uh, what is it, exchanges and things like that. They really don't like ledgers and things like that because there's no KYC around them. And look, I agree. I don't think that is the way to do it. Uh, and hopefully this law gets uh, you know cracked off pretty quickly. All right, more stimulus. Good Lord, more stimulus coming. President Biden and Senate Democrats press for another $3 trillion. On the heels of the last stimulus package, US President Joe Biden is uh, creating more legislation that may lead to a massive $3 trillion package dedicated to domestic needs and infrastructure. The recent stimulus talks have a few economists feeling optimistic about the future of the American economy, while Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has said the next stimulus bill will have to be paid for through higher tax rates. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Yeah, they'll give you all this money, but then they'll tax you for it. Well, a, a triple-edged sword, but then your money also buys you less. But look, if they continue to print money, that's bullish for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, period, full stop. All right, now, 
U.S. court. So for all my Ripple people out there, the, the XRP army, the U.S. court rejects the SEC's attempt to block XRP holders' motion to intervene in the Ripple lawsuit. So in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit, the court has rejected the SEC's, SEC's attempt to block XRP holders' motion to intervene and has set submission deadlines for the motion to be filed as well as a response uh, from the SEC and Ripple. So this lawsuit is really, yeah, it's getting very, very interesting. Uh, I still don't know what the outcome is. You know, there's news going both ways. You know, the the judge that was involved in it, she seemed pretty open to that it was not a security. It was exactly what it was uh, supposed to be uh, and, you know, decentralized enough, I guess. And, you know, then you hear about the SEC cracking down even harder in certain areas as well. So so much news out there and look most of it was really really bullish i'd love to know your thoughts down below just really really easy all i want you to do is type in the comments bullish or bearish that's all i want to know for me i am bullish at least in the sort of medium term again the next few months from sort of august through to march i don't know exactly when that might change and look, it could go on longer. Maybe the super cycle comes true. I'm not exactly sure. But generally, the peak of the bull cycles have been around the December, January based on our previous history. So we'll just have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment, which is really, really good to see. But beware of the weekend. And I'll see you next time.